So welcome Kelly uh, Raffaelli, um, director of the MICA program at Michigan Tech, and I'll let you introduce yourself also with your new title. <laughs> sure. Um, hello everyone. Uh, like Ana Maria said, I'm Kelly Raffaelli. I am the uh, associate dean of student engagement at Michigan Tech, and I have been involved with the MICA program for eight years. Um, in all aspects of the program. Um, and so I'm really excited to be here, especially because last year we had to cancel the program due to the COVID pandemic. So I'm excited to get the ball rolling again. Um, Anna, can I share my screen? Okay. You should be able to. Okay, great. So um, I'm gonna talk about the My Cup Scholars Program, which as I mentioned is at Michigan Tech. It is organized through the Center for Diversity and Inclusion. Um, okay. So what is my Cup Scholars Program? Well, it's a seven week residential academic undergrad summer research internship. So the program starts in May and goes to the end of June. Um, and you live on campus uh, in the residence hall you get paired with an academic, with a uh, research mentor to do research. Um, and then um, you also take a course and I'll talk more about that. So where is Michigan Tech? You may not know where Michigan Tech is. We are located in the Northwestern corner of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So if you look at the map where this little tiny green star in the corner, um, it is a 10 hour drive ish from Grand Rapids um, and uh, we are on the gorgeous shores of Lake Superior. So um, you can see from the photos, these are some photos of our campus. Our campus is located right on the water um, and right now as it's snowing, I am looking at those pictures and can't wait for summer because summer is the most gorgeous time to be at Michigan Tech for sure. Um, so I'll talk, and then who qualifies? So the program is through a grant that we have from the state of Michigan, and we have three partner um, community colleges. GRCC is one, uh, Wayne County Community College in Detroit is another, and then Delta College in Saginaw, Michigan is the third. So only students from those three community colleges um, can apply to the program. You must be a US citizen or a permanent resident, and you also have to be a resident of Michigan. Um, by the time the program begins, we want you to have completed one year at the community college. So as you're applying right now, you know, if at the end of the semester will be, you know, a full year that you're at the community college, then you still qualify. Um, we like for students to have at least a 2.8 GPA. And the reason for that is that although our um, not unlike Michigan's program, we, our goal, of course, is for you to continue on to a four-year university, and Michigan Tech would be the bonus, and we would love to have you, but it, so if you did decide to transfer to Michigan Tech, a 2.8 GPA um, is the minimum requirement for transfers, so that's why we make that the minimum requirement. Um, and the program targets students who are uh, low income, first generation, um, you know, students who um, we know will excel in the program. Uh, what you'll do, so you will be enrolled in a one credit honors research course. And in this course, you will learn how to uh, write a proposal. You'll learn different strategies in the lab. You'll, you'll learn about the scientific process and you will also learn how to create and present a scientific poster. And we work in collaboration with not only the instructor for the course, but also graduate students um, who come to the class and they teach you how to present, how to talk about their re the research and um, all the ways to build the poster. Uh, you will, like I said, be paired with a faculty or graduate student working in, in your field of interest. Um, and the MyCup coordinator works very closely with each individual student to find the best fit for them. Now, we don't always have the exact perfect um, fit for a student, but we work really hard. So I'll give you an example. We had a student who their major was, um, and their Michigan Tech student now, was audio engineering. Well, in the summer, there was no audio engineering faculty available for a project. 
but the student was also interested in psychology. And we did find a professor who runs a lab called the Mind Music Lab. And so for the MyCup student, we found this perfect solution of combining um, his interest in psychology and his interest in music because the lab was studying the effects on music on our um, mental health and our like reactions. So if you like, we're in a, a set of a road rage type of situation with music um, help calm you down, things like that. So his research, his project was working in this lab. So it worked out really well. So that's why we really take this individualized approach to find the best fit for you um, on our campus. And, it's, and although Michigan Tech is known to be a STEM focused university, you do not have to be a STEM student to apply to Michigan Tech. We've had very, or to apply to the MyCup program, we've had very successful students in the MyCup program who were um, interested in going into human resources or interested in going into different um, components of business. Um, students who are in, um, we have a really terrific integrated um, physiology program. So if you're interested in like physical therapy or, um, you know, athletic training, things like that, we have some options there. We even had somebody one year who was wanted to go to the police academy and we were, we were setting them up with um, an internship with our law enforcement um, agency on campus, um, but then the MyCup program got canceled because of COVID, so that was sad. But anyway, my point is we work with you individually to find a good fit. Um, like I mentioned, you create and present a scientific poster. At the end of the program, we have this big event, which is really the, the, the best day of the whole um, program, where you and the others in the program showcase their, their posters for all of campus to come through. And it's kind of like a walking um, tour. Folks come and go from poster to poster, and you present to small groups as they come up. And then we have a big dinner to celebrate all your accomplishments. So it's a really um, terrific night. And you get to keep that poster um, and it does go on your resume, your portfolio. This is a you know, really terrific thing to add to your portfolio of experience. Um, like I mentioned, you're gonna, live on, you're gonna live in an on-campus residence hall. And because this is the UP, you're gonna have a ton of adventures and fun. Um, so what does it cost? It actually doesn't cost you anything. Um, you earn a $2,500 stipend. Um, so you get that in three payments throughout the program. And we understand that um, for all participants, coming to Michigan Tech is really, you're giving up a lot, right? You're leaving your home. Maybe you're taking a break from your job. Maybe your family's dependent on you for income. So we want to um, offset some of that loss of income you may have by coming up to the program. So this is you know, why we give you a stipend. And as long as you meet the requirements of the program, you, you continually get your stipend. Um, you get a scholarship for the course, so it's no cost to you um, for the course, and your room and board is included. Uh, the only thing that really costs you money is any kind of extracurricular activities. Like often students will um, pay to go on a kayaking trip or you know, the ropes course, or we have a, a old, you can go on an old um, copper mining uh, tour, and that costs money. So those are things that we can't use grant money to pay for, but your room, your board, your course, and your stipend are all covered by the grant. Uh, you can see in the photos here, um, we have a, a group of students who are in front of um, canoes. We do take the entire group on a canoe trip um, about midway through the program. Uh, for an adventure that you don't have to pay for. So you, at the very least, you still get to have one adventure. The program expectations are that you attend all your classes, complete your assignments, you know, do your research, work with your lab, have good communication, um, you know, that you, you present. Another thing we do is we have one-on-one -on -one meetings every week with the program staff so that we're working on your academic goals and setting you up for success, whether you decide to stay at Michigan Tech or to go somewhere else. We want to be partners with you in that, so we want to meet with you one on one to make sure that you're, you know, you're as prepared as you can be. Um, we want you to be open to new experiences and work hard, but also have fun. Um, this is a wonderfully beautiful place with lots to explore, so we want to make sure you get an opportunity to do a mixture of some um, adventure and some and work. Um, that's really what Huskies love to do. Where you will live, you would live in Wadsworth Hall. Um, this is our biggest residence hall on campus. About 2,000 people live 
in this residence hall and it, and it has its an in-house dining hall as well, which is where you'll get your meals. It has game rooms, laundry rooms, music rooms, study areas, it has kitchenettes, um, full computer labs, it comes fully furnished, it even has a sauna. Um, it's really um, a great building to live in. It's in the heart of campus, so you're easily um, accessible. I was taking a walk the other day around campus and I timed myself. It took me 11 minutes to walk around the entire campus. Um, now I was walking pretty quickly, but still, it's not a very big campus. So you, you really um, are in the heart of the campus when you live at WAG. Um, so what about COVID? So Michigan Tech takes COVID very seriously, um, as all of our you know, institutions do. Masks are mandated on campus, and we actually have a COVID testing center and lab on campus. You can actually see that's a photograph right there of Dr. Karen Help, who is one of our all-time most loved MyCup mentors. She runs the COVID lab, um, and she is brilliant and very dedicated to MyCup, and Soon I will be bugging her to see if uh, she would even let somebody come into the COVID lab. I don't know if she will, but um, so we do uh, all testing on campus. We run all those tests. Um, we actually are about to start doing vaccine um, clinics as well on campus. So we are in the heart of um, COVID uh, research right now at Michigan Tech. So that's very exciting. Um, right now in the residence hall, we have a system set up in the dining hall that it's food to go. So you go into the dining hall, you tell the folks what you want, they put it, they wrap it up for you and you take it somewhere else. What Michigan Tech has done um, in the warmer time of the year is we have picnic tables all over campus and places all over where you can sit outside and eat and, and you know, socially distance, um, be with others and so that you don't necessarily have to go back to your room. Um, and it will be summer, so there'll be lots of places to eat outside. Um, right now, our residence halls are two people per room. Um, and, right, and I'm negotiating with housing to see if maybe we can, for my cup, just have one person per room. It will depend on um, when we get closer to the summer. And then, like I said, we strictly follow all CDC guidelines. So whatever um, the CDC says we should be doing and the state of Michigan says we should doing, be doing, we're doing. We have an entire website and team dedicated to the COVID pandemic called the um, MTU Flex Team. Um, right now our classes are a mixture of in-person and remote. And so we have a hybrid model. Um, so just to give you an example of how we're doing on campus with COVID, um, all students were required to get testing um, when they return to campus in the spring semester, and we have a 1% uh, positivity rate. And so we have an entire um, half of an entire building set up for isolation. So those students are, you know, taken care of. Um, we have students have options for if they want to take remote classes only, they can do that. So we are big time doing a really great job with COVID at Michigan Tech. And we, um, I got the word today from my boss that um, you know, summer programs are a go and we plan on having them. So, um, of course, COVID has taught us anything. It's taught us that we have to be flexible. And so hopefully that will still be the way, but we are intending to have my cup on time. Um, so how to apply. So our, our, um, applications are available on our website and then, um, we've shared the link with Anna Maria that she can share with you as well. Um, so ideally, we want you to meet with Anna Maria. We want you to talk about um, preparing to write the essay. Um, we want you to get a letter of recommendation. Um, we use a Google form. So for GRCC, it's really wonderful because you also are a Gmail suite. And so it integrates really nicely with your email. Um, there's directions in the application right in the beginning on uh, what's the requirement for the essay. Um, basically, we just want to know what your area of interest is, is why you're interested in doing summer research and what you hope this experience will bring to you and to your future. Um, the deadline is February 1st, um, but I know from 22 years of uh, working with Anna Maria, we'll probably negotiate that being a week extended. Uh, so we may extend that um, a week or so. Um, so it should be real simple to apply. 
Um, but I highly, highly, highly encourage and recommend that you speak with Anna Maria and get support from her on the process. So why should you apply? Well, you're doing, you'll get to do some real cutting edge research um, at Michigan Tech. Most students join a project underway and get put to work immediately. We've had students um, strapped with um, all sorts of things for prosthetics. We've had students who had to go in Lake Superior with under, underwater um, submarines and testing them out. We've had students um, doing all sorts of stuff. We've also had students published. We had a student who was actually studying nursing at Delta College and she came and did my cup and they had a breakthrough while she was in the lab. And because she was part of that breakthrough, her name is on the, the uh, publication and she actually was invited to present the research at a conference and she was not at Michigan Tech anymore. Um, and the faculty members still included her. So Michigan Tech is really big on experiential learning. It's all hands-on. We want you to get right in. Undergrads are in there. Um, my favorite story that has to do with GRCC is when we had a MyCup student from GRCC. We had a brand new, uh, we have a cloud chamber at Michigan Tech and it was brand new. They had just built it and it wasn't working. And it was the MyCup intern who said, maybe you should try this. And that was the problem. And to this day, Dr. Cantrell, who was the mentor then, who is now the Dean of the Graduate School, said if it wasn't for that MyCup student, we'd still be trying to get that thing to work. So it's a great, we, we really um, try to immerse you in the experience. You get to experience on-campus living far from home. That in itself is an experience. Um, to, to live with strangers in a 10 by 10 room and eat food that you don't cook. And these are all wonderful experiences, even if they don't sound like it. Um, you make great friends. Um, I know my cup students who um, were in each other's weddings and are in each other's lives, you know, five, six years later. Um, and so my cup really um, creates long lasting friendships. You earn free credits that go on your transcript. Um, you earn money. Um, and you get pushed out of your comfort zone. Um, so two, two little quotes here. I, I included two quotes from past um, My Cup students, but I, I want to highlight uh, Nefertia from, she was from Wayne County Community College. You know, she talks here about how she came to Michigan Tech for My Cup and then decided to transfer. Um, and Nefertia went on to um, go to graduate school and get a, a graduate degree and she decided to make a career in student affairs and now she's um, a student affairs professional in Oklahoma, you know, and the MyCup program really pushed her out of her comfort zone and opened many doors for her. Um, and so, you know, it's a really terrific program, very reputable, um, you know, it's a, it's a real unique experience. Just to, as an FYI, other universities in the state of Michigan have MyCup programs, but our program is the only one that takes place over the summer. And of course, that's due to our distance, right? We're so far from lower Michigan. So that's why we created a summer program. Um, like I said, the application is online. Um, get some help from Anna Maria and she can help you fill that out. Um, this picture is our, our GRCC crew from two years ago. This was on their night of their uh, presentation. They took this picture. And then uh, Anna Maria doesn't even know this. We just hired a brand new staff member. Um, his name is Christopher Sanders. He will be joining us in, um, in the beginning of March. So he will be brand new with the cohort as well, but I will be there every step of the way to um, help him out. And then our wonderful Karen Wade, who is our uh, My Cup financial manager. Um, she's in um, the Center for Diversity and Inclusion and will be instrumental in making this program a success as she always is um, for sure. So um, we look forward to welcoming Christopher to our family for sure. And that's it. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take any questions. I know Doug has one because he's been waiting to ask you, but I think you, asked, you answered the most important one which is I think that you are running in person and that is really, really exciting. But Doug, you have more questions. Yeah, thank you, Miss Anna. Hello, Kelly. Hi, um, Doug. 
Yeah, my name is Doug and uh, my major is computer science. So I have went over to uh, Anna Maria like to write an essay and also I contact with my faculty for letter of recommendation. So basically I submit the application. <laughs> yeah, so um, I have a question like, um, so like for some like artificial intelligence, like do the MIT programs offer like artificial intelligence research, uh, Kelly? Yeah, so we're definitely doing artificial intelligent research at Michigan Tech. Um, and so the process to find the mentor, what we typically do is if you're accepted to the program, I reach out to you and say, I want you to, you know, this is your major. Here are the faculty in that department. Here's their research. Take a look through, identify, you know, three to five faculty that you would be interested in working with and sort of maybe rank them, like this is the one I want for sure, but this one would be good too. And then I start reaching out to the faculty because they do this voluntary. Oh. And so we wanna make sure that they're equipped to mentor you the best way that you deserve to be mentored. So we don't want them to be like, yeah, 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 and then they're not really there, right? So we have sort of interview them as well and we make sure that they're um, you know, um, prepared to do that. But computer science has lots of projects going on. Um, we do a lot of stuff with um, also with, with AI, but then also machine learning. Um, we have a brand new college of computing at Michigan Tech. And so um, that's definitely a priority here. That's great. And then I have a question like, so like I work with like a faculty, like professor, full-time professor at Michigan Tech. And also I work with a mentor, right? Like two person, well, the, right? the faculty will be, so it depends on the faculty member, but the faculty themselves may be the mentor or they'll mm -hmm. pair you with a graduate student who will be oh. the mentor. And so um, that really depends from lab to, from, from experience to experience, because some faculty are really hands-on and, or they don't really have that many grad students. And then like I mentioned, Dr. Help. She runs a huge lab and has PhD students and master's students and undergrad students. And so she has like a huge team of students. So we would pair you with a mentor. Uh, one of, she would say, you know, you'll be with this mentor. Um, but we always work in very close collaboration with the faculty member and the graduate students. Okay, got it. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. Great questions. Uh, Immaculé has a question. So go ahead, Immaculé. Hi, uh, my name is Imakri. I have a question. So um, I'm planning like to go into med school and I have like, you know, research experience. So would you say like this is like the good experience if I apply to this program? Yes, absolutely. Um, we have um, really lots of different types of research going on that would be great for a, a pre-med student. Um, we have a whole biomedical engineering department that does, you know, um, sort of the devices, medical device aspect of research. But then we also have um, folks on campus who are doing virus, you know, virology and immunology. Like, like for in COVID, for example, we have our own immune, immunologist on campus. So she's like telling us what to do with COVID, right? Because she, this is her expertise. And so we have those labs. We have um, integrated physiology, which is really a lot of uh, pre-med students are in that department. So there's a lot to look at. Plus we have biology and um, you know, other health science areas. So it, what I would do if you were accepted to the program, we would work closely to identify you know, what specifically you're interested in and start there. But I've had pre-med students do uh, work with faculty who are doing research on cancer and, you know, different disease. We also do a ton of stem cell research here. Um, so there's just lots of options for pre-med. It's a great place for a pre-med student. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Kelly. Are you able to share that sli uh, the, the slideshow with us? Absolutely. I'll send that to you. And I will be, I'm going to stop the recording.